Welcome to Module 2 of the Biomedical Design Series using Fusion 360. In this module, we'll show you some best practices for using picture references within Fusion 360. Our medical team has provided us with photos of a handcrafted prototype that was determined to be an ideal shape for the implant. Since it's an organic shape, it only contains a few major dimensions. We've been asked to create a parametric fusion design that will allow us to easily collaborate with the medical team. It's important that we make the design as close to the concept as possible, so we will utilize these photos directly into the design. I've asked Matt Perez to help me explain the process for incorporating these photos into our design. Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Chris. All right, so let's start talking about the best way that we can go about creating our new file. Now we have our biomedical design folder that Chris has created. Inside invention and prototyping, we have images and references. So these references are several images that were sent to us for different types of designs that we, we can possibly create, some good references and a good base direction for what we need to do. Now, of course, we're dealing with organic shapes in nature, so we need to make sure that they fit the specific person, in this case, the specific bone structure. But the idea that we have is this bottom right image here. This is the type of implant that we're gonna be working on. Um, this nice smooth curved shape, but the basis of all of these, the actual ball and socket joint and some of the basic mechanical geometry stays fairly similar. So we wanna work based on that sort of assumption that we can make this single device fit this particular bone structure, but have some of the base features that we don't want to update. So we're gonna start by taking a look at two of these images. We're gonna be looking at this image right here, which has sort of an x-ray image of the ball and socket and a different type of implant, but very similar in what we're doing in nature. And then the second image we're gonna be looking at is this one here, and this is gonna have more of the shape that we want. So the reason that we're doing this with two different images is because this allows us to put in, in this case, the hip bone, the ball and socket of an implant that has been in an x-ray. So we have the correct orientation, we have the correct angle, we have all the information we need there. And then we can overlay the implant that is roughly the right shape that we wanna create. So that way we have those two references, we can toggle them on and off. But there is a downside to this. While you can use the cloud A360 storage for these types of images, we can't use them to directly insert into our file. Uh, so we still have to have them locally on our machine if we want to use them as a picture or an inserted canvas image. So now that we know which two images that we're going to be focusing on, I'm going to go ahead and hide the data panel and work in the untitled default file that comes up anytime you open Fusion 360. Now inside here, we're directly inside the model workspace, and you'll note at the bottom that we do have capture history on. This timeline is here because we're working with a base file. If you do not see this, it's important that you do turn this on. You can right click on the unsaved portion and go down and make sure that capture history is turned on. So once we're sure that capture history is turned on, we wanna talk about the overall structure of what we're doing. Now we are designing an organic hip implant. Now with that said, this is a multiple piece assembly. We have the ball, which has a tapered fitting in it, and then we have the implant that we're dealing with. So we're gonna be dealing with this as two individual components, not parts, not bodies, but components. So inside of here, we're gonna start by creating two base components. From the assemble tab, we're gonna use new component and we're gonna name the first one ball and we're gonna deselect the activate option and say okay. And then we're gonna create one more and we're gonna call this one implant. You'll notice that it remembered our last setting and it's not going to activate this one. So now we have the overall unsaved, we have the ball and we have the implant. Now before I do anything else, I'm gonna save this file. Now you wanna make sure that it's located in the appropriate folder. In this case, I'm gonna to have to go down to invention and prototyping, and I wanna stick this in CAD files. And I'm gonna call this Biomed Implant. We're gonna go ahead and save that. So now we have a version zero Biomed Implant that we've created, which really has no geometry, it has no pictures. It only has two individual components. Now the reason we like to start off our, in this case, the, the hip implant design like this is because whenever we activate a component, for instance, if we activate the ball, 
it's only going to contain the features, the sketches, the information that we use to create that. It'll simplify the history timeline greatly. And once you get farther down in these designs, when you get hundreds, even more than that, if you get that many features in the timeline, it gets very hard to discern what is what. So this is a great way to start your file, nice blank slate without having to worry about moving things around or restructuring it later on. Now the important part, starting to insert these pictures and figuring out the scales and orientation and all that. So from the current setup that we have here, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the top right of my view cube and select front. I'm looking directly at a front view. This is the view that I wanna place, the plane that I wanna place these images on. Next, I wanna make sure that the top level biomed implant is active. So you'll notice that the radio button to the right of it we want to make sure that that's active and that one of these specific components is not active. And the reason I want to do that is I want my canvas images to be located at the top level. I don't want them to be inside of the ball or inside of the implant. I want them to be located at the top level of my file. And also notice that our units are millimeters. Again, very important. So the next step that we want to do is go to the insert dropdown and go to attached canvas. This is going to allow us to start by selecting a face or a plane. And you notice because we already went to the front view, we can very easily know that we're selecting the correct plane. Next, we have to select an image. Now again, these have to be located directly on your machine. Unfortunately, you can't bring them in from the A360 or the data panel. You can't bring them in from anywhere they're stored on the cloud. They have to be local. So we're gonna start by using the hip implant image. So we're gonna insert this image. And you'll notice that by default, it's just kind of floating around down here. It's not located anywhere, um, but that's okay. We're gonna move it around so that the center of the ball, as we zoom in, is roughly located at the origin. That is going to be the basis for all measurements of this type of file. They're all gonna be located at the rotation point, uh, in this case, the axis, the center of the ball and socket. The next thing we wanna do is make sure that we adjust our attached canvas settings. So first we have canvas opacity, and I like to put these around 50% for most cases. You can manually enter 50 or you can use a slider to get it kind of close. It's just a good number for most cases of these attached canvas images. The next thing we want is display through. Now what I mean by display through is if you have solid or surface geometry on the other side of the canvas. Now remember this canvas is on the front plane. Our design is gonna be coming in front of this and behind it as well. So anything that's on the back side of this image, we can still select, we can display through and still see what's going on. The selectable option, this is something that once you okay the attached canvas, you cannot go back and edit, you cannot adjust this. Now what this means is you can actually select the canvas. This may or may not be a good thing. I typically like to leave it off unless for some reason I need to select it so I can right click and edit it quickly. But in this case, I'm gonna leave this off. We don't wanna do anything else with any of these settings. We're gonna leave all these settings as default because I'm gonna show you how we can scale this to be closer to what we actually want. And we're gonna say okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and redock the browser off to the left side and fit to view. So now we have a very good view of a current X-rayed implant, very similar to the shape that we're gonna be approaching, but uh, again, it's a little bit different than our end goal. But we now have the shape, the ball and socket, and the tapered section of this as a good reference. 